Hey everybody, it's Derek and welcome back to CRM Tip of the Day's Video Tips, your source for tips and step-by-step -step instruction on the latest version of Microsoft Dynamics CRM. So in today's feature, I want to continue talking a little bit about the, the preview features that ship with the spring update and talk a little bit about some of the machine learning capabilities. And so as the application has evolved, you know, a lot of machine learning has started to come into the application. When you start thinking about, you know, doing knowledge based searches and, and things like that, it's very handy if the application starts to learn tendencies and understand, you know, these types of cases are often tied together. And so it has the capabilities to go out and make suggestions on cases that might be similar in nature based upon what you're doing. Same thing with knowledge base articles, going out and, you know, searching for knowledge base articles to actually understand specific types of keywords and key phrases that you might use and understand what those things look like. And so, as it's working through, it can kind of build a database, so to speak, of understanding, you know, in this particular instance or in this organization, this means this, let's go ahead and do something based upon those situations. And so they've introduced these as preview functionality features that you can test for some of your baseline capabilities as part of the application. So I'm going to hop into CRM and we'll go ahead and we'll set this up. So it's a preview feature, so you have to enable it just like any other preview feature. You're going to go into settings and you're going to go into administration and then you'll go into system settings. And then from in there, you'll see your previews. And so there's a couple of different options here that we see from a preview standpoint. One of them is our cross-sell product recommendations. So that's if you want to do, you know, cross-selling of products and recommend products from that standpoint. And then there's your text and, and analytics for case topics, similar cases, and then um, knowledge article suggestions. So this is going to take some of that functionality that we already have as far as, you know, knowledge base article suggesting and some of those things, and, and it, as opposed to using kind of fields, it's actually going to use values from text analysis. So you can enable either one. They're, they're separate options that need to be configured. For our purposes, we'll just go ahead and enable the text analytics, and I'll go ahead and click on OK. So this is going to tell us that we're using uh, you know, Azure Machine Learning, and that's going to provide recommendations, and, and that's fine. So we'll go ahead and click on OK, and then OK again. Then we'll refresh this, and then once we refresh this, we will see the analytics piece will be set up and ready for us to work with. So now we can go ahead and, and kind of configure that piece from, from an application standpoint. Now, one of the things that I've seen people when they're you know trying to initially set this up, they assume, well, I have an Azure account, I can go up sign for machine learning, I can use that, and, and that'll kind of you know get us set up from that standpoint. That's actually not the, the, the way that you, that you need to kind of do this. Um, so one of the things that you'll have to do when you click on the, the configuration option is it's going to ask you for, you know, what you want to connect to. So it's going to ask you for your, you know, the, the item that you want to work with. From the preview standpoint, we recommend that you use kind of the, the data market, um, the Azure marketplace to, to set up this option. So they've got a couple of different options underneath the, the Azure uh, marketplace that will allow you to kind of configure and set that information up. And if you haven't done anything on the Azure marketplace or, or anything from that standpoint, uh, there is an option that you can use to kind of set that information up. So if I go out, for example, um, to open a new tab, I can just fill in, you know, uh, datamarket.azure.com. And then if I just enter in kind of home and language ID um, equals 1033, I hit enter. This is going to basically just take me out into the, the data marketplace. They may have actually gone out there. They're in the process of switching that over. So it may look a little bit different, but in this case, you can just go ahead and sign in uh, based upon what it is that you want to do. I'm going to go ahead and sign in. I already have this subscription information kind of set up from that standpoint. Now, if I go into and I sign into my marketplace and I go to data, this shows me some of the different data option sets that we have available. Now, right at the top, I'll see that there's two options here. There's the text and M analytics option, and there's the recommendation options. You could search for either one of these just by typing in text analytics or recommendations, and it would get you to the same spot, and then you could, you could sign up for them. When you go ahead and you click on each one of these, the text analytics piece is the one that we're going to be using for knowledge base types of stuff. The recommendations option would be if you were going to configure this for product recommendations and, and items from that standpoint. I'll go ahead and choose text analytics. You'll see that there are a couple of different options that you have available here. There are transactions. Uh, I, 
we are recommending just basically use the 10,000 transactions a month. That'll get you started with it. So you can kind of test that information and then work with items from there. Once you sign up for this particular piece or this particular component, then what's going to happen at that point is it's actually going to give you the information um, and it's going to give you what's called an account key. And that account key is what you can then use to fill in how you want this information to work from an application perspective. Um, so once you have it set up, you can go in to explore your data set. Once you go in to explore your data set, it'll show you where your, um, your item is within that situation. It'll then show you right in here where it says primary account key. This is where you can click on show. This will give you the account key for your specific item. You copy and paste that item into your application and then you can work with it from there. So once you've gone ahead, you've gone through the key. Now you can go into your Azure machine learning. So I can go into my text analytics. I can come into here. This will be automatically pre-populated. I paste in my account key. Once I paste in my account key, I can then go ahead and test my connection. It'll take sure that tell me that everything looks okay. Then I can hit activate. Mine's already activated, but then I can hit activate and that's going to activate the text analytics piece of the application. So now you can go ahead and start configuring some of these functionalities inside the application. So now let's go ahead and look at kind of some of the different components. So I'm going to go into settings and I'm going to go into service management. And so I've got a couple of different options here underneath my, my items that I want to work with. I have my automatic case topic analysis options that I can work with. And I also have my knowledge article search settings that I can work with based upon, you know, which specific option I want to be working through as part of the application. So this gives me the capabilities to kind of define how I want to, you know, work through this. Let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the knowledge search option first. So again, we already have kind of knowledge base capabilities where you can go out and you can, you know, search for knowledge base articles and have it recommend different articles based upon items that are being, you know, entered into the topic and those types of different situations. Now what you can actually do is you can go in and you can define different kind of keywords or different phrases that you want to work with to actually build kind of a data model that would then learn different types of communication options that you can use to to set and configure some of this information up. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and because I've enabled the functionality, I now have another option in here called knowledge search field settings. And this is where I can go in and kind of define the algorithms basically, or the configurations that I want to use as part of the application itself. And so one of the things that you can do now is when you come in here, you can add a new configuration. So I'm going to go ahead and click on new. I'm going to define what this configuration looks like. So I'm going to just call this. Then I'm going to go ahead and specify kind of, you know, what is the maximum number of key phrases I want to use when I'm determining kind of the items from a text analytics standpoint. So I've, I've kind of defined, you know, what is the, 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 the item? What is the entity? The entities are going to be based upon entities that have been enabled for knowledge search. So if you haven't gone in from a knowledge management capabilities and turn it on for like account and some of those other options, you won't necessarily see them in here. But if you've gone in and followed maybe some of the recommendations we've done in other videos, you'll see that you'll have that option to kind of set that up in this standpoint. So now I'm going to go ahead and define, you know, how many what the maximum number of options is I want to use. And I'll just say three key phrases within the situation. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save it. So the next thing that I need to do is I need to kind of define what are the options or the, the, the keywords or the phrase fields that I want to use that are going to start to, you know, determine over time what those items are. And so this is where I can go in and I can add what specific items I want to work with within this situation. So I can come in here and I can hit add. And then this is going to allow me to kind of build this repository of information from that standpoint. And so one of the things that you'll see in here is it's going to have different fields and different items that it'll show within these individual situations. So I can see the entities that are associated with the case entity. I can see the activities, the case, the case resolution, the email field. What would be the fields that you would typically be looking at as searching through those individual items? 
So obviously case would be kind of the first one. And then what would be some of the key aspects from a case perspective that you might be looking at? Well, obviously case title would be probably a huge aspect of one that you would be looking at. So I would go in and define the, the, the field that I want to work with from this standpoint. So this is one of the fields that's going to have that information available that I would be working with. Now I could go ahead and add multiple kind of fields from this particular perspective if I wanted to. You know, I could also come into here and I could maybe add for the case field, you know, maybe the description field because people are going to enter information into the description field. So this would be one that would be very beneficial to, to understand what's happening from that standpoint. And then I could continue to add, you know, other fields that I might want to work with. Another common one might be the activity field itself. And within the activity field, we might use the activity description field uh, from that standpoint. And then maybe the, somebody might enter in something into notes. So you're just going to kind of enter the information in based upon the items that you would want to work with. So now I can go ahead and activate this model. So I'll go ahead and activate it. And so this is going to start, you know, the, the, the analysis piece and the learning information as we're moving forward. So now the, the next thing to this is I have to make the modifications on the case form to use the, the, the text analytics piece and not necessarily use the field in information. So now what I would have to do is now I would go in and I would customize the case form. Now there's multiple ways that we can customize the case form just from a time perspective. I was going to cases here. I'm going to customize entity. We'll open up the case form. And then we'll go ahead and modify the information on the case form. So I'll open up the case form real quick. I'm going to go into my conversation tab uh, where I have kind of my knowledge search functionality and information set up in here. So in here, I'm going to go into my conversations tab. I'm going to switch to knowledge based search. And so in here, instead of actually doing suggestions based upon field values, so in the past we've done field values and we've done case title, um, or we've you know been able to specify kind of what options we want to look at. Here's where we now have the capabilities to switch this to text analytics. And so you'll notice that the case title option is kind of grayed out because now it's going to use the text analytics model that we've defined. And so that's where all of those individual fields that we set up from an application perspective are now going to be used. And so as people start to enter information in there, it'll start to kind of work through that and start doing you know similar suggestions based upon those different situations and so this is where now you could go into that configuration and you could add additional fields to define you know what the fields and the key phrases are that they're looking at from from an application standpoint and so then once you've gone in there now it's going to continue to work just like it would in the past when you go into your knowledge base articles and you click on your knowledge base articles and it's going to then start to show you all of that relevant information based upon those items now again just like anything you need to give it some time to make sure that it does have the capabilities to go in there and, and, and learn what those functionalities are. But it does give you those capabilities to work through that just as you're going through. So that's kind of the the, the starting point anyways for text analytics. This is just one of the options with the knowledge base search. You can do topic analysis on this information. You can do um, our other types of suggestions based upon, you know, different items. So there's there's different things that you can configure. And in, in, in the next video, we'll actually show you some of the different uh, topic analysis type functionalities that you have available. But this at least gives you kind of a starting point so you can see what some of the baseline capabilities are. Again, this is a preview feature. So I certainly, you know, use it for testing purposes. It's not necessarily anything you want to do from a prime time perspective and, and into your production environment, but it should at least give you a nice starting point to kind of play with some of this information. And I would highly recommend too going in and looking at some of the product analysis functionalities as well. But this is, you know, the future of CRM from, from an analytics standpoint is going to be machine learning. So it's definitely in your best interest to take a look and experiment with some of the functionality. So again, for all of us here at CRM Tip of the Day, this is going to be Derek saying that's going to do it for this week. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. Take care and have a good one.